innovation and thinking and creating things we have to you always understand uh, discover and act because if we don't understand well what we do we wouldn't be able to change it most of the things which we are in facing in our uh, underdeveloped world that we have a problem to understand the real problem uh, we are living in a very strange uh, world and i will introduce you to understand why we have uh, social innovation and why we are talking about innovation uh, out of the technology you know historically technology companies are innovating and since the beginning about uh, 50 years back they will be innovating they are innovating now but today we talk about people innovation and social innovation is something which we need uh, to tackle and we need to understand where we are currently so most of the problem coming from the order one of the biggest problem we have in the world that we have a tremendous amount of increase in the population that increase of population will be translated in every single thing we will be seeing all our life so the most important uh, motive behind that that we are uh, about one one century before in 18th century the, the population of the world was about one billion now we are hitting uh, seven billion and perhaps we'll be hitting uh, 11 billion which will be changing many things in our life the second phenomena which is a global phenomena don't forget that afghanistan is part of the world and the world is moving so here we try to understand why the world is moving we have currently about 200 million migrants who are moving everywhere and those people are moving with their knowledge you know different uh, profession different background and they are uh, changing and shaking the society third uh, global uh, event which we are uh, talking about the change of the model of the uh, governments itself uh, historically we have uh, since the 19th century the creation of what we call it uh, contract social which was the relation between the state and the uh, citoyen or the citizen where we have kind of uh, creation after the second world war we call it welfare state like every country the government is taking care of education health uh, everything infrastructure and the citizen is receiving and that kind of uh, model which was uh, established since the second world war it started to be checked uh, 10 years back very strongly and i have an example and we have tremendous example the figure here shows you the amount of money the american government is spending for one single item which is a care system so the growth of the welfare ent entitlements and spending in us in trillions the figure shows that each decade every 10 years the amount of budget is doubled and this is a lost budget about 10 trillion us dollar yearly spend it only for covering the social entitlements of people like the uh, welfare and the, and the obamacare and one of the problem why obamacare was cancelled just after trump came to power that the costing of that system and this is one of the sign of uh, a failure of capitalism and we have capitalism you know the capitalism is is already not working and we have example this is uh, the results of the pre-exit in, uh, in europe you know about two years back the british people uh, voted to get out of the uh, european union which one of the failure of the globalization and the statistics showing that people who voted for the get out of exit were poor people people who are not making part of the global system one very nice uh, news in the media in 2017 mentioning that 17 million Britain, British people have less than 100 pounds in their account. It means the middle class in, in the Britain, in UK, is, is getting poor and poor. So the system itself is not working well. The second fundamental uh, or the third fundamental change in our world is technology. And I use uh, my, my friend Thomas Friedman, he's an American um, journalist who has a very nice book. I advise you to read it. It's, you can download it. He summarized 10 elements which we changed the world from that small country, small world to one, I mean, big world where we didn't have that communication with each other to become a small village. A few minutes mobile application which might be transported to India, to any country in the world, and it will be workable at the same time. The 2nd of September, also 8th, uh, 1905, 
95 was the date of creation of Netscape. I guess the generation sitting here is younger than the Netscape. Netscape was a godfather of uh, internet, like uh, Explorer, Internet Explorer, the first generation. So the date of putting on the net some uh, software where we can communicate all of the world is different. It wasn't before. Uh, workforce, uh, workflow, uh, software, the, the merge of data with the music with an invention which creates the whole the structure we have now, the digitalization of music and art and everything was a moment of merging together data with music and uh, the uploading you know that the generation like me in 19 in 2005 2000 um, I mean, 1997, we were just a witness for the internet. We open it, we just look because we didn't have any interactivity. And with the creation of what we called Web2, we start to upload, we start to be active. And from this moment, we start to be humanly activating the, our, inter, inter, our contribution and interaction with the world. So we can like, we can upload. I'm sure no one knows that uh, you 2K, why 2K? I guess our friends from India know the, the uh, end of December 1999. We said that all computers the first day of the year 2000 will stop because their algorithm wasn't designed for uh, facing the eight figures 0000. So we have a bulk of business. We call it how to transform all the IT system in the world to face the challenge of the year 2000 and India was a champion of that and this was the first ever bulk massive business to India and thanks to that that uh, the IT uh, legacy of India started from that booming. We have different uh, like offshoring um, supply chain. The supply chain is started as, a, as what? As instead of producing one item, why we don't produce a chain of item? And that changed the mind of people and linking people together. So uh, ending by the last one, the steroid, I guess the creation of mobile also makes things mobile so we can we can move we can move things with us so anyway the the 10 points uh, all technological by the way makes things different so starting from year 2000 to 2002 the year become the world become different world however all what you have seen <coughs> didn't solve any global problem so we still have about 1 million 1 billion people in hunger we have 1.3 people in extreme poverty we have about 1 1 2 billion don't have access to electricity i mean what we have seen all the progress of the economy technology and everything didn't change the world Perhaps it, it, it does uh, worsen a certain uh, problem, and we have things which we can imagine that you know 65% of world heritage is are in dangerous. We have 52% of population are unbankable. This is a global figure. This is not one country. So it's, it seems that. The, the, the governmental structures and programs which were working until today are no more working for everyone. There is a kind of a discrimination. This graph is I created uh, saying that we have two different worlds. The world before 2005, 2002, it was a welfare state where everyone is asking the government to do for him. The world after 2004, 2003 is a work for, work for work world sorry where everyone has to create his own future and that's why we are here for the innovation because everyone here can can innovate and create a value which wasn't before for our parents and our ancestors it wasn't here and thanks god that we have a progress and inter young kind of historical progress if you look for people who the business people from the era of industrialization they have the uh, the reputation of people are exploiting people are making money are focusing and being more rich and more um, more, more uh, you know wealthy however the new generation of business people perhaps some of you will be among them are people who are working for the community so we take richard branson uh, you know but richard branson is uh, one of the leader of the social enterprise who is taking care of the community yeah anita power anita Bowl is a founder of to, uh, Body Shop. Anita Bowl was a home business. She started with a 6,000 uh, pound uh, from uh, from the Princess Charles Foundation, and she was behind the tremendous change in business mind. And she has four boxes. Last one, she called it business was conscious so if you see the progress we are making money but later on we have henry ford people making value at changing the industry later on we have people making money from technology like uh, bell gates and later on we have people making money from social so now we are merging the new innovation with a problem of people and even we have very famous theories that became like uh, this book i advise you to read it 
the power of unreasonable people. Unreasonable people will be people like us who are willing to change the society, but to make little amount of money. No, we are not focusing making money. We are not focusing in innovating in, in, a, in a vacuum. We are willing to solve the problems of society and making money, and some of our of people call unreasonable. So that change of that structure, the, the chart in front of us is showing a very simple way from the extreme right, you have corporates who are there to make money, and from the extreme left, we have est, uh, uh, left. Sorry, you have the charity. And just to show you that there is a, uh, we have for-profit corporates and we have non-for-profit, and we are creating two different that uh, uh, kind of uh, yellow box mentioning social. Uh, social entrepreneurs, this is classical show, social entrepreneurs, and we have a new generation about five years back started to merge, which is conscious business. People who are really uh, tackling the very, very complicated problem of the society, not only making a social enterprise, but going for the heart, heart talk, heart problem. Uh, innovation is very simple. Everyone knows what is innovation. Innovation that we have a problem. Okay, I guess that people who participate in several uh, uh, innovation lab knows that we have a problem. We, we try to solve the problem. We try to find solution. We try to test the solution, and uh, until the end, if the solution is workable, we make money. However, in, in, in social things are different. That we have to identify the social problem first. So the social innovation will be novel solution, more effective, more efficient, more sustainable, and just better than what existing. And believe me, in social affairs, we have plenty of problems. Problem. problem education, empowering, uh, elderly, handicapped, we have problem of environment, we have problem of corruption, traffic, those all the problem which we consider like a social problem, all what we have is to concentrate on a solution, which is making a, a corporate, uh, we call it social enterprise. So we create value through this, all what you expect from the innovator, that he has some ideas which is desirable, the first circle to the uh, left, viable so if we uh, implement it it will leave it will sustain and feasible so anyone he has an idea which doesn't comply with the three circles here we don't consider it a kind of innovation it's just an idea just to show the difference between normal innovation and social innovation that social innovation goal ultimate goal is to change a world and to make what we call it uh, change making on the com community make world change so we start by the idea concept i find a problem i'm thinking on a problem i start to develop what we call it here proposal so how can i foresee the solution who will be partnering partner with me the solution prototyping then sustaining the prototype then scaling developing and uh, enlarging and we ending by the systematic change the single difference, according to me, between normal innovation and social innovation that we, we are looking to change the world. We are looking to change the problem, not to make the pro money, not to make a corporate. The issue is we have a challenge. We are looking for the final solution of the challenge. I will use two examples to show you. The first example you know, is microfinance. For those who don't know, uh, microfinance is microcredit. Microcredit started in, uh, in Bangladesh uh, with uh, Professor Mohammed Yunis, and I'm very proud to be part of his global think tank in social enterprise. When uh, Yunis w w was going back after his PhD in the States, back to his uh, native country, Bangladesh, in 1978, uh, 77, sorry, and he found very poor people in front of university or beggars are getting just, uh, they are willing to get just any kind of amount. He asked them why you are doing this. These are very poor people. And we have people who are giving us money with very high uh, return. So he created the idea. He gave $40 to 28 guys and say, okay, we uh, every two weeks we will meet to re resp uh, refund me. And it started like this the idea. So if you look for the system, Muhammad Yunus launched the Grammar Bank in, uh, in, in 1980. After 10, uh, 15 years or 25 years, sorry, we have the uh, creation of crowdfunding. You know, the crowdfunding is a use of platform to make a microfinance. So the, his idea, you see it down, if it's clear, we have global uh, portfolio about 100 billion US dollar. We have 300 million clients. This figure is of 2014, so four years back. So his idea of creating a small system of giving small amounts of money and get it back was global idea and about 400, 300 million people are benefiting from this idea. It, it didn't stop here. 
50, 25 years after the technology came and people said, okay, we, why we don't do this microfinance on the net, on the internet, so we make it uh, crowdfunding. And not only this, in 2009, people came from Somaliland and said, why we don't do this also in mobile, so we have that, that system, which is payment, full payment by mobile. So the idea here, it, uh, let's say that end of day investing about 500 million or perhaps one, uh, one, one billion. Just to show you, you know, not only the develop, uh, underdeveloped world, but even in Canada, uh, statistics show that the Canada has about one, you know, the, uh, 31 billion. Canada has West Coast. Anyway, people are throwing food after that, what we call it West, uh, estimated by three, uh, 31 billion US dollar. However, they have about 900,000 people registered in food bank. You don't know that in Canada, they have poor people who are uh, registered in a food bank to, just to give eat. So they created a food system lab where people are thinking how to use West food and, and uh, how to distribute it again for the poor people in Canada, not in, in, in developed uh, country. Having a much more uh, entrepreneurs doesn't have a straightforward, a positive impact on the economy. We have to have a good people and a very innovative people. And thank you.